Good morning. Thank you, choir, for beautiful music. Very nicely done. You will uh, notice, uh, if you've been traditionally uh, a Lutheran and you've been uh, here during Holy Week, things get a little bit more somber, uh, a little bit more solemn as we head into this week, which, of course, we would expect. Um, I want you to take a look at your bulletin. I don't always do this, uh, but <clears throat> uh, I do want you to take a look at your bulletin. Uh, one of the things is uh, in the prayer section, uh, we're going to be using this morning uh, this for our prayers. Uh, one of the people that is down here is uh, our president, uh, uh, President Newman of the uh, Texas District. President Newman is kind of like in the Catholic Church Cardinal. Uh, so uh, he, uh, apparently his mother has passed away, so we're going to pray for the Newman family this morning. And of course, we look at all the people who are in need of our prayers, members of the church and friends that are there, and of course, all the situation around the world. We certainly want to pray for that. Uh, this week, uh, we will have Monday Thursday worship uh, with communion, uh, and that'll be Thursday at 11 o'clock, and then Good Friday at 11 o'clock without communion. Uh, and we certainly invite you to be a part of that as part of the Lenten tradition. Uh, if you look at the back, you will notice that uh, that is not what we're going to be using today as far as the gospel lesson. In the Missouri Synod, uh, a number of years ago, we went to kind of a your choice type of thing uh, where either on Palm Sunday you can celebrate what we traditionally celebrate on Palm Sunday, which is what we're going to do today, uh, or you can uh, have a reading of the Passion, which you see here. Uh, and, and apparently the reason that they do this is because quite a few people don't make it to the Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday services. And so what they began doing was introducing the lessons for Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday uh, into the Sunday before. So uh, you have that here, uh, but we will be looking at the traditional Palm Sunday uh, service and lessons for this morning. We certainly invite you to uh, uh, also, if you would like some Easter lilies, uh, if you'd like to decorate the church with Easter lilies, there's uh, a form back there and you can give money. What are they? Ten dollars, Steve? Is that what we're asking for? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So we uh, welcome you to worship and we ask you to uh, certainly uh, rejoice with us. This is a day of celebration, even as we head into uh, the uh, week of the Passion. So a very traditional, obviously a very Palm Sunday uh, worship uh, and uh, opening hymn, right on, right on in majesty.
Son and of the Holy Spirit. Forgiving Father, your Son came as the gentle King of glory. He rode a donkey, not a stallion. He humbled and sacrificed himself in order to bring us peace with you. Long ago, the crowd with incessant hallelujahs greeted our Savior, but how quickly they mocked as he went lonely to the cross. Forgive us for the ways that we, too, have welcomed him only in words and resisted his kingship. May your Son not find in our hearts another place of crucifixion, but a place of love, loyalty, and devotion fit for such a gentle and humble king. Mold us into the gentle ways of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our God loves us and forgives us all of our sins. In the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Psalms 118, beginning at the 19th verse. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous to our eye. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Blind, Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. God. The epistle is from Philippians chapter 2, beginning at the fifth verse. Have this mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. This morning found in John 12. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered 
that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard that he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please join with me as we confess the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and he <coughs> and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Our sermon hymn is Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. peace and mercy be to all of you from God the Father, from his Lord, our passion Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and of course the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, we welcome those of you who are guests here uh, with us uh, this morning. Uh, we have been over the last four weeks doing a stewardship emphasis, and 
to help us understand that uh, this church uh, is going to be having some major changes coming here already and in the near future and into the future. And with changes comes often angst. Uh, I was thinking this morning uh, the old uh, expression, how many whatever blank does it take to change a light bulb? And of course there's the church version of this too. So how many Catholics, how many Baptists, how many uh, Assembly of God, how many Methodists, and then of course how many Lutherans does it take to change a light bulb? The answer is change. How true. How true. 69 years of my life I've been a Lutheran. I've seen it. Uh, I tried doing it in my church in Plattsmouth, Nebraska. Uh, a lot of angst. A lot of tension uh, to make changes. And, and it's not going to be any different here, brothers and sisters. Let's just make that crystal clear. Change is never easy. It is difficult. It goes against, to be honest with you, I think the sinner in us, not the saint. The saint is willing to change. The saint knows that uh, he or she is a new creation every day in Jesus Christ. So we're going to talk a little bit about change this morning. If you come to the Bible study, I have an excellent Bible study prepared this morning for you on change. Uh, some wonderful things if you would join us after church in the uh, social hall. We'll, we'll dive into it a little bit further in a way that you can't in a sermon. But one of the things about change, and you see it uh, there on the screen, is that life and things that happen can happen in an instant, and boy, they often do. Today in our readings, we heard about things that changed dramatically in the span of one week. We know that. Today we hear shouts of Hosanna. Friday we hear shouts of crucify him. The waving of palms today is replaced with the cracking of whips. Riding on a humble donkey is traded for hanging on a cross. And a man who on Palm Sunday is full of life was by the end of week laying dead in a tomb. Really, a whirlwind or a tornado or a hurricane doesn't even begin to describe what happens between Palm Sunday and Good Friday. It's a hurricane that took 12 disciples from following their king into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday to, be hold, to being holed up in fear behind locked doors on Saturday with no clue of what they were going to do. Things in life can change in an instant. And they often do. And what do we do, what, what is sort of the knee-jerk reaction when things change in our lives? Well, we become control freaks. You know that, I know that. We usually try to stop the change or make it go the way we want. And boy, during this week, we're going to see a lot of that. Judas tries to take control by betraying Jesus, making things go the way Judas thought was best for Jesus. When Jesus was being arrested in the garden, Peter drew his sword because he thought he could take control of the situation. The chief priests kept trying to orchestrate lies to somehow get Jesus condemned. Pilate what is he doing? He's trying to exercise the control he had as the Roman governor of the province of Judea. But even he was stymied. And of course, Herod, the chief priests, the crowd, all of these people were reacting internally to the changes that were happening around them. But the truth of the matter is there was only one who was in control this entire week, the one who is always in control. The one who would drink the cup the Father gave him. The one who would not defend himself with weapons or words. The one who would not hate those who hated him, nor revile the ones who reviled him. The one who made himself nothing, as we heard today in Philippians, and laid down his life. I'm sure people thought as he was being crucified that they were taking his life away from him, but no. 
They were only doing what God the Father and Jesus allowed them to do. You know that. He could have stopped it. His dad could have stopped it in an instant. Jesus himself said, I could send 12 legions of angels as if he needed that many. You only need one. And he could have changed the entire thing that went on there. But Jesus didn't do that. Instead, Almighty God allowed himself to be bound. The judge of all allowed himself to be judged. The Lord of life allowed himself to be crucified. But brothers and sisters, understand, he was controlling it all. Even if you consider his words on Good Friday as he was hanging on the cross, this isn't someone who is caught up in the circumstances of events. He's the one in control. Listen to his words. Father, forgive them. To the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. It is is finished. The things in life can change in an instant, and they often do. But the truth of the matter is, nothing changed this week of the Passion. We know from reading Paul's letters, from listening to Jesus' words in the Gospel, that this entire script of what we see coming in the next week was written even before the creation of anything, before the creation of the universe, before Adam and Eve sinned and then plunged us into a world of death. The triune God knew what they were doing. They had a plan laid down for Jesus' life, for the life of the world, for your life, that you and I may have life. But you see, brothers and sisters, we're now the disciples. He chose the twelve, but he also chose you. Because you know the story. You know how things turn out next Sunday. The original twelve, two thousand years ago, didn't know that, even though Jesus told him, you may remember, three times. But they couldn't understand it at the time. The Bible tells us only later, after Jesus was risen and ascended, did they get it did they remember? Only after Pentecost and the infilling of the Holy Spirit did they see. And when they opened their eyes, or I should say as God opened their eyes, they saw it was all part of the plan. Jesus was in control all the time. But we're the disciples 2,000 years later. And things in life can change in an instant. And they usually do. You know that. One wrong word. One little deed can change your life. A careless word can end a friendship. An honest mistake can cause you to lose your job. Sitting in the doctor's office and he, he or she comes in and says the thing that you have in your body, there's no cure for it. There's no treatment. Or somebody else makes a mistake that changes everything for you. A drunk driver. False accusation. Or maybe that sin that you have been hoping nobody else would notice catches up with you. You thought you could get by with it till the day you die, but it suddenly becomes known. And the hurt that you cause because of that sin can't be undone. And maybe, brothers and sisters, some days the name Judas is synonymous with your name. Things in life can change very quickly, and they often do. And the good news is, for all of us, when we were baptized, things change. <laughs> Immediately after that water was applied three times, at that moment, the one who is always in control, always in control, remember that, made you his son, made you his daughter. And the words from the cross were said that day at your baptism, Father, forgive this child, 
forgive this daughter. And this child, you, my little child, will be with me in paradise forever. Because at that moment of your baptism, Jesus took you into his death and resurrection. The Bible tells that. We're buried with Jesus on Good Friday and we're resurrected with him on Holy Easter. For what reason? To give you new life. To give you hope. At that moment in time, in human history, when you were baptized, Jesus took everything he has, everything he did this week coming up, and he gives it freely by grace through faith to you. That's not all he does. He also then makes a promise. He said, my love for you is never going to change. I'm not going to take it back. You can refuse the gift. You can leave me at the altar as a jilted bridegroom in favor of your life of sin, but I'm never, Jesus says to you, I'm never going to take away my promises, my vows that I made when you were baptized. You need mercy? I'll give it to you. You need forgiveness? Hallelujah, we all need that. I'm going to be here for you. You need life in the midst of death? I will be here for you. I give my life to you, and I am still giving my life to you. I'm glad we decided to have Holy Communion this morning. Because brothers and sisters, there's life. Right there. Right there. There is life. And Jesus is saying to you this morning, you come forward, you eat this body, you drink this blood. It's here for you. This is part of his promise he made at your baptism. I am here for you always. And that's never going to change. Amen? Amen? Uh, Be a little more Baptist this morning, please. So maybe here's the deal, brothers and sisters. Maybe we've been going about life wrong. Hmm? Maybe as Lutherans, we've been doing it wrong our entire lives. Huh? Like Judas, Peter, Pilate, and the chief priest. What is our response to things changing? It is to try to take control. Right? We instinctively do that. We don't even always think about it. We make ourselves something and try to do something about stopping the change. Let's look at Jesus. He is our example after all, isn't it? What did he do? He made himself nothing. Isn't that what we read this morning in the book of Philippians? Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Although he was in the form of God, I really should say, though he was God, He did not count equality with God the Father in his human form a thing to be grasped. But what did he do? Try to control the situation? No. He made himself nothing. Nothing. Taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of human beings. And being found in human form, he humbled himself. By the way, pride is always associated with trying to take control. By becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. So maybe what we need to think about this morning is doing what Paul says. Let me put it to you, what you just read and heard in a different way. Have this mind among yourselves, brothers and sisters, which is yours in Christ Jesus, That though you are a baptized child of God, do not count this status as a thing to be grasped. But brothers and sisters, make yourselves nothing. Take the form of a slave and humble yourself even to the point of dying for the sake of God and your neighbor. Wow. What would happen if all those who truly are baptized Christians were to have that kind of attitude? 
this world would begin changing. We would bring a whirlwind, whirlwind of change into this world. We would put our hope not in ourselves trying to control the situation, trying to stop the change, but to make ourselves nothing and rely on Jesus and let him take control. But to make ourselves nothing doesn't mean to not do anything. I'm not saying that. But it does mean to do as Jesus did. To love those who hate you. To bless those who revile you. This is crucial, to forgive those who sin against you. To have no unforgiveness in your heart. Scripture is really clear about that. Scripture says, don't even come up here and take the body and blood of Jesus Christ this morning if you have unforgiveness in your heart. Don't do it. Because you're making a mockery of what God is offering you in the body and blood of Jesus. If there's any among you sitting here this morning who have unforgiveness in your heart, I beg you, get rid of it before you come up. You can. Let it go. If you have unforgiveness toward any human being, even if it's from the time you were a child, let it go. So you can freely receive the forgiveness that God has for you in the body and blood of Jesus. It's important. It's a godly thing to do. And when you do these things, what are we showing? We're showing that Jesus is in control. The Holy Spirit has control of our hearts and minds. And yes, you know what? This can be scary, and it can be hard. It can be very difficult to not be in control of your life. But you see, brothers and sisters, we have the advantage over the world. We know how the story is going to turn out. Right? You come here next Sunday, you know what we're going to be teaching and preaching about. And beyond that, you know what's going to happen when Jesus comes again. When he burns up this world that we're so concerned about and so trying hard to control the circumstances of our life, it's all going to go away. It's all going to be destroyed. It's going to go up like a puff of smoke. You know the one who is in control of all things, and I hope and pray he's in control of you. Every second, every minute of your life. And that one is God the Father and Jesus Christ our Savior. And because he is in control, everything has changed for you. Which means nothing really is going to change for you. You're a baptized, forgiven, dearly loved child of God. And though everything in your life may fall apart and change... That fact that you are a child of God and have life now and eternally is never going to change you. See, that's the good news this morning. When things in your life change in an instant, as they often do, or even when they don't, remember that moment when everything changed for the better. When the tomb was empty, when the word of God was fulfilled, when the gates of heaven were open for all of us. And because of that, we say, Hosanna. And you will hear those words from the mouth of Jesus next Sunday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us rise for the prayer of the church. If you want to follow me in the bulletin, I'm going to pray right off our prayer page this morning. Heavenly Father, we live in a world filled with sin and with sin-filled people. And there are many people who are living in fear and distress. 
Iraq, Malaysia, China, Nigeria, Turkey, Mexico, Syria, Central Africa, Afghanistan, and so many other places that we don't even know. Lord, we ask for peace in the Rio Grande Valley because we know what's going on. And frankly, it scares us at times. We ask for a peaceful solution to the huge influx of people that are crossing our border daily. Lord God, you know the solution to this, and it's probably not the government. It's you taking control. It's you hearing the prayers of your people who on their knees pray for peace in this world. So we ask that you bring that peace. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all of our medical staff, the first responders and staffers who still are coming in contact with COVID. We pray for our country as the southern Texas border is invaded daily by illegal immigrants. We pray for peace in Europe as Ukraine is still being invaded by Russia. Lord, help us to realize there are forces beyond the Russians and Vladimir Putin. There are evil spirits. There is Satan himself who is behind this. Lord, you tell us that our war is not against flesh and blood. It is against the spiritual forces that are behind the flesh and blood, people like Russians and Vladimir Putin. Lord, you're the one who conquered Satan. So Lord, we ask you to take control of this situation not only on our border, but in Ukraine. With one angel, you could stop this war. Lord, if that be your will, we ask that you do it. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray for Cardinal Newman, the fact that his mother passed away on April 4th. Lord God, comfort the family. Give them the hope of eternal resurrection, the hope of a family reunion in the future. Give him comfort. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are ill, those mentioned here, Ben, baby Hannah, Richard, Chuck and Gail, Irvin and Marilyn, Jean and Marie. Lord God, there are many others who are members of this church, who are friends of ours, who are family members, who need healing of body, soul, and spirit. Lord, we ask that you bring them that healing. That you bring it swiftly, if that be your will. Lord, we remember, you're in control, not us. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this church as it goes through some major changes coming now and into the future. We ask that hearts would be open, that we would sincerely look to the Lord to ask, Lord, what is your will? Not ours be done. Thank you for the good news of the funds raised. We rejoice that you have opened the hearts and the minds and the pocketbooks of many people. We ask that you continue to bless that. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, as we enter into this holy week, we ask that our hearts would be filled with love and faith because you are in control. And nothing is going to happen this week that has not happened because of your plan. Thank you for that, and teach us to put our faith, our hope, our trust completely in you every minute, every day of our lives. Hear our prayers, Lord Jesus, and answer them only according to your good and gracious will. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue now with the service of the sacrament. ask you to bring your hearts and minds to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sins giving him into death that we might not die eternally. 
Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to a new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now may this peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Now may this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and to life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please rise. given us a foretaste of the peace to come in the holy supper of your son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our final hymn.
Actually from, yeah, there you go. Uh, actually from your native palms here, uh, right here. Uh, so that's a wonderful thing that uh, she did. We really appreciate that. Uh, nice little memento for us this day. So we have a couple announcements. Ladies first. 